Howdy friends, it's Uncle Denz, and I am playing Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Alright lads, oh, it's Black I'll give you Blackbeard's honest opinion. I mean, I'm you ask really me, can guy, this new captain promise you a life of prizes, plunder, and adventure? Aye. For amongst all the gentlemen of fortune sailing these West Indies, he ranks amongst the most clever. You talking about me? There was a time when I thought myself the deadliest scourge of these seas. Oh, but this man is a fearsome oh, dog that feeds on trouble and turmoil. I seen him clear the deck of a Spanish galleon like it were nothing. Fighting like a devil, dressed as a man. And he's a canny one. Knows his way round every crag and crevice of these islands. So if his fortune and adventure you seek, and Captain oh, Edward can wish man. your man. Only, don't meddle in mean, his private affairs. The For there's I mean, more Blackbeard mystery to that page. man than oh, even I like dare mom. ask. I'm going to his own boy. <laughs> okay, so my niece and I enjoyed this game several years ago on PS3, and I just found it was re-released on PS4. And I'm probably not going to play this all the way through, we didn't last time. I just remember how much fun it was sailing my own ship. And that's all I really want to do is sail around and pillage and plunder and collect some booty. Arr. And although there are tons of stuff to do in the ports and the side missions and stuff, only 60% of the game takes place on land. Which means that almost half of it happens at sea, and the free roam map is huge, like GTA V. I'll show you the map later, but it covers the entire of the Caribbean. Okay, so let's play. I'll have to do a few of the missions at first to get my ship, and in the, in the beginning we'll probably have a lot of cutscenes and all that stuff. Historical events. Okay, see, this is one of the reasons I like this game so much. Is that we learned a ton of history. Because we had to look up all the things and make sure they were actually real. So anyway, we're playing as Edward Kenya. And I guess this is a prequel to the wildly popular Assassin's 2, where the protagonist is Hatham Kenya, Edward's son. I didn't actually play any of the other Assassin's Creed series, I just read about them. And I don't know, Jack Septicai did a couple of videos on this game, and in the first one, before the game part saying how bad it was compared to the previous one. Then he came back in another episode and said, well, it's actually really good. And it is really good. Okay, play. Yeah, start new game. Yeah, yeah, definitely new game. I'm a very good driver. Your shorts are on the highway. Okay, wait. So where are we? Um, Cape Bonavista is on the west end of Cuba. And 1715 would have been right in the height of the age of piracy, which stands from around 1650 to around 1730. And around this time was... Okay, wait. Go back to the turn of the century, 1500. Columbus discovered the West Indies, which began trade routes through the Caribbean. Wait, wait. Go back to the East Indies. Trade with India and the nearby islands goes back to the spice routes of Rome and Europe as far back as the 5th century. And faster routes for large amounts of cargo was by water, through the Red Sea and into the Mediterranean. You heard of uh, Sinbad the Sailor? Pirate. From the 8th until around the 15th century, the Republic of Venice and neighboring coastal republics held the monopoly on European trade with the Middle East. 
the Silk Road and the spice trade, including silk, incense, spices, medicinal herbs, drugs, opium, and the trade of these items made these Mediterranean states very rich until the rise of the Ottoman Empire that led to the fall of Constantinople in 1453, and Europeans were barred from using these routes anymore. Istanbul and Constantinople and So the Europeans decided to try to find an alternate route to around Africa. Portuguese explorers were huge on exploring. You've heard of Magellan, Ferdinand Magellan, uh, Henry the Explorer, Bartholome, Bartholomew Diaz, uh, uh, um, Basa de Gama, Diego Columbus, Christopher's son. Anyway, the Portuguese first found a route south around Africa around 1480, and seaborne trade was solidified with the archipelago east of India, which included Singapore, Malaysia, Bangkok, Burma, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, the Philippines, and the whole area became known as the East Indies, East of India. You've heard of the East India Trading Company, if you watch the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and Captain Jack Sparrow talk about Singapore. Well, there was also the British East India Company, the Dutch East India Company, there were like five or six companies that financed the trade routes and marketing of goods from the East. So anyway, the trip around Africa took a long time. So in 1492, you know, an Italian explorer named Christopher Columbus speculated that since the world is round, which was still under much debate at the time, that they could sail west and circumnavigate the globe until they reached the Indi eastern side of the Indies. And after appealing to a couple other countries, it was the Portuguese who granted them three ships to find a route around Indies, or find a route to the Indies. But he didn't find the Indies, although he continued to insist that he did, based on maps by Marco Polo, an explorer of Asia in the 1200s. Where he did land was the Bahamas, which, if you have to land somewhere on the planet, the Bahamas would be a good choice. So by the turn of the century 1500, he had made four trips, exploring all around Cuba, Jamaica, the Lesser Antilles, even points on Central America and the north coast of South America. And no, Columbus did not travel as far north as Florida. He discovered the continent called America, which stretched from the North Pole to the South Pole, and was later divided into North America, Central America, South America, so you would know where which area you were talking about. But they referred to cumulatively as the Americas, and later as the New World. So he did discover the Americas, he did not discover the United States of America area. Oh, and you get the name. United States of America. Republics that are united together and living on the continent of America. United States of America. So anyway, the Caribbean became known as the West Indies, and trade routes were established by subsidiaries of the East India Trading Company. The Dutch West Indies Company was established the British West Indies Company, etc. And ports and sediments like Havana, Nassau, Kingston were formed as stop-off points for transport carrying gold and silver from Central America and resources from the Caribbean islands. Well, the British, who were also exploring across the Atlantic and establishing colonies up in North America, heard about all the wealth coming out of Central America and started hiring privateers and assassins to attack West Indies ships and ports that with all that treasure. See, piracy is defined as shipborne attacks on other ships or land targets with the intent of stealing their goods. So there's a fine line between pirates and privateers. It's just that one works for the government and the other doesn't. Oh, and buccaneers. The term buccaneer refers specifically to pirates that operated primarily in the Eastern Caribbean, who were named for the type of meat that they ate. You see, Bukhan is the native Caribbean name for a wooden framework on which meat was slow roasted or smoked over a fire. Spaniards later called the same process barbacoa, and later it became barbecue. 
Seafarers use the wooden frames for smoking strips of meat, preferably manatee, but also the wild pigs and cattle that roam free on the islands around Tortuga and Cispagnola, now named as Haiti and VR, which were frequent, frequented by French privateers. You've heard of Kofos the Musketeer? French pirate? So the French derived the word boucanier as one who uses a frame to smoke strips of meat from cattle and pigs. Hence the word bacon. Let me smoke like bacon, it's bacon! No, actually it was slow roasted, so it was more like jerky. Which was perfect for storing on a long voyage aboard ship. Anyway, the English added their own translation to the spelling and it became buccaneer. Bucan, bacon. Bacon eat. Bacon, 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 smoky bacon, meaty bacon, tasty bacon, gotta get that bacon! Bacon, 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 worth the bacon, I smell bacon, gotta be the only one thing that smells like bacon, it's bacon! Bacon, ooh la la. I say, I smell your bacon. What's in the bag? What's it say? <gasps> I'm a pirate! I can't read! Please, please, please give me what's in the bag, I want the chewy, yummy, smoky bacon! I'm a bacon ear, I'll bite you for that bacon! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, nom 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 nom, it's bacon! So anyway, by the mid-1600s, ports had turned into forts, trade ships were being escorted by warships, and privateers were starting to realize, hey, I'm risking my life for a sailor's pay, and the government is keeping everything we plunder. If I had my own ship, I could keep on doing what I'm doing now and keep all the gold. So many privateers were turning pirate during this period, and until a treaty was signed between England and Spain, in the 17 teens, so privateers were no longer necessary. And you suddenly had all these unemployed sailors with fighting experience who were happy to join a crew anywhere, so pirates were becoming a force of their own. Which brings us back to Edward! Yay! So, anyway, okay, so Edward Kenway had been a privateer for a couple years, training under, um, What's his name? I remember Benjamin Hornigold and his quartermaster at Batch, who later became known as Blackbeard. Anyway, in June 1715, his ship attacks a Spanish fleet, and during the battle, he's forced to take the wheel. The fight was a victory. However, the powder keg caught fire, and the ship was destroyed. Oh, okay. Shut up. Shut up. It's like. Okay, see this guy? You see that guy? That's Duncan Walpole, a, an assassin for the Spanish fleet. But yeah, I didn't really look him much up about him because he didn't have really the role. Oh, am I playing? I'm playing. Hold, hold, 
fire. Hit him, him again, hit him again. Dangerous. Edward. Hmm? Privateering. Is it dangerous? Is that Caroline? Wouldn't pay so nice if it weren't. That's Caroline. Why not sail with the King's Navy? Earn a proper wage, sail under gentlemen. Sod the Navy's gentlemen. For every shilling I'd earn, the captain gets six hundred. That's no way to earn a fortune. We don't need a fortune. It's not about need, Caroline. I want food that don't make me sick. I want walls that hold back the wind. I want a decent life. Okay, Edward Kenway was born March 10, 1693, to a poor Welsh farmer in Swansea, Wales. Around the age of 17, he met Caroline Scott, a woman of modest but steady means, and they soon fell in love, much to the dismay of her father, Emmett Scott, who had already promised Caroline's hand to the boring son of a wealthy East India Trading Company executive. But Edward's charms eventually won out, and he and Caroline were married in early 1712, a union that angered her father and got the whole of Bristol talking. So the drama. Anyway, wanting to provide her with the lifestyle she was used to, instead of being a farmer, he dreamed of privateering to earn a better wage. Being a sensible and prudent woman, Carolyn tried to discourage him, but he said, I'm going to go to the New World, explore the coast of America north of Florida, and find us a land to settle down in, and I'll name it yours, Carolina. No, that didn't actually happen. I made that up. How long would you be gone with these privateers? A year, I reckon. Two at the most. All right. No more than two. Promise me. Oh, okay. So that was a memory. Reach the shore. Reach the shore. Okay, I gotta reach the shore. <clears throat> Swimming to shore. I'm swimming to shore. I'm walking the mile. I'm walking the mile. Swim faster. Swim faster. Keep swimming. Keep swimming, Dory. Just keep swimming. Uh, Alright, don't look around. Just keep swimming. I'm probably going to cut all this stuff out. This is boring stuff. I'm stopping. Oh, look at the pretty fishies! Have a little fish! You see the fish? Look at the fishies! Alright, from the shore. From the shore. Good for you as well. Havana. I must get to Havana. I must get to Havana. Well, I'll just build us another ship, will I? I can pay you. Isn't that the sound you pirates like best? One hundred Eskimos.
keep talking. Will you or won't you? You don't have that gold on you now, do you? Hey. What are you doing? I'm trying to help you out. Bloody fucking pirates! Really? What power do you want on? Bloody pirates! I'm onto you, Snake's Bay! Come on, mate! We're off to a bad start! Alright, we need to talk. That was not very gentleman in there. Come on, let's play some sword, shall we? Where are you? Where are you? It's a hundred leagues or more to Havana. Will you walk that distance? Okay, I know there's treasure chests and stuff all over the island, and I'm gonna skip those for now when I get to my ship. But I do want to go here. This is a save point. There's two nice things about a save point. <clears throat> go up. I'll just way up there. Way up there, okay. Two nice things about a save point is you can fast travel to that location again later. And the other is, to give you a vantage point, you can see where all the treasure chests and stuff are hidden. There we are. Save. Look, you can see the whole island. Okay, so now, down below, see, I can see all these treasure chests and stuff to find, there's a letter. Now I need to find this guy. Alright, I think this is a good place to stop. I know there's a lot to do, we're going to have a lot of fun with this game, and I know let's play means that you play the game instead of talking about it so much, but I... I had work and I had a lot of fun. I love this game. I thank you for watching. Look for it again next time. Until then, stay nice with others. And you have a great day!